800 years ago, the Catholic Church launched a crusade against heretical Christians. It began a genocide so complete that most people have never even heard of the Cathars. And no one's ever met one. Ever. Their destruction marked the beginning of a reign of terror that plagued Christendom for 600 years or so, the Inquisition. It deserves its own mini-series, a serious reflection on man's inhumanity towards man, and coming to terms with the very dark history that built the world in which we live. But we don't really have time for all that, so I'm going to give you a Rate My Cult. Rate My Cult, The Cathars. Now, I don't personally believe that the Cathars were a cult, but the Catholic Church did, and the Catholic Church won. Now, the Cathars considered themselves Christians, and the people of the region actually called them the good Christians. But that didn't matter in the end. They were heretics, or so says the Pope, and so says the stakes they were burned on. But who were the Cathars really? They were Gnostic dualist Christians from the Languedoc region in France, around Toulouse, a group of people who spoke Occitan, not French. And they wouldn't have considered themselves French either. They would have considered the people from the North French. Now, the people that came down from the North in this crusade and took their land, they would have called them the French. But now we look at the whole region and we say, oh, that's the South of France. Now, the Cathars lived in that region from time unknown until about the 14th century when they were annihilated. There were two types of Cathars. There were the perfects or the parfaits. And these are the people who had taken the oath, the consolamentum. It's called the consolamentum. It's basically an oath saying that they're going to forego all carnal sins and they're going to live this godly lifestyle. Those are basically the priest class. And then you have the followers, the credentes, the believers who believe in the Cathar faith, but they haven't taken that oath. So what is the Cathar faith? What is the Cathar faith? What is there to believe in? Okay, they were Gnostics. If you don't know what a Gnostic is, definitely check out my interview with Miguel Connor. He runs Aeon Bite Gnostic Radio. It's one of the best spiritual podcasts on YouTube. I absolutely love it. Basically, Gnosticism means knowing. Gnosis in Greek, it means knowing. And so it's to have a spiritual understanding of the divine that comes from within yourself. A lot of Gnostics are mystics. They would have called themselves mystics, and they go through all kinds of different religions. This is very complicated. This is very complicated. But Gnostic belief predates modern Christianity, and it may go back as far as the Egyptian hermetical schools. Then it goes to Greece. That's why we get the etymology Gnosis from Greek. But... But what is Gnosticism? Remember, I read this particular passage from the history of Christianity. Gnosticism is a knowledge religion. That is what the word means, which claims to have an inner explanation of life. Thus it was, and indeed still is, a spiritual parasite, which used other religions as a carrier. We're not going into it now. We're not, this is not a podcast on Gnosticism. We already did that. This is about the Cathars. The Cathars believed in reincarnation, the transmigration of the soul, that human beings are divine energy trapped in a material form, in this immortal prison. They would describe the world as a mortal prison. It's kind of similar to Eastern Buddhist philosophy. Also, like Eastern Buddhist philosophy, if you lived good in this life, you'd be reincarnated in a better position. But if you lived badly in this life, you might be reincarnated worse as an animal or something like that. Now, living as a perfect, if you took that oath and you kept following it, you would skip all of the reincarnations and you would just go directly to heaven, go directly to Soros, be at God's side. So that's why it's so important for the perfects to keep their oaths, to maintain their faith. Now, reincarnation actually does go back in modern Europe to before Christian times. They talk about it in the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, how these tribes that were migrating across Europe believed in the transmigration of the soul. I don't know how much of that belief got trapped in southern France when the migration stopped. I just don't know. There are a lot of sects that believe in reincarnation. So was that the same tribe that later became the Cathars? It's hard to pinpoint the Cathars' exact beginning. Also remember that Rome, the Empire of Rome, became Christian in the 4th century. So all of this time, the religion that was Christianity meets this Gnosticism, this mysticism, had time to foment. Cathar belief was actually similar to this group called the Manichaeans, who were the original Gnostic heretics back in 
OG Rome. And OG Rome actually condemned the Manichaeans to death. So this is like a kind of wash, rinse, repeat. Now, people say the Cathars may have come from a group of Gnostics around the Balkans. They're called the Bogomils. Uh, maybe there was contact, but like I said before, these ideas were floating around in Europe. Ideas spread easily, but who knows? This is all part of Cathar myth. Cathar lore. Cathar lore is so dense. It spans from ancient Egypt to modern Rome and the Da Vinci Code. There's movies about it. And the Nazis were obsessed with the Holy Grail, as we know from movies. The Cathars were dead 700 years before Hitler was even born, so I don't see why they've got to get dragged into his mess. I only mention it because the myth around the Cathars is epic. People claim to be reincarnated Cathars. This whole group of people in Bath claim to be reincarnated Cathars, which actually makes sense within Cathar doctrine because Cathars believed in reincarnation. Cathar lore is a rabbit hole. It's so big and so dense, but I'll try to do it justice. Now, Cathars were dualists, and dualists believed that there was a creator god of this material world that was evil. Because look around at the world, it's kind of evil, right? So the God who made this world must be evil too. They also believed that there was another God on the other side that they would reunite with one day and that God was good. But that was the spirit realm and this is the material realm. So basically the Cathars were like material world bad, spirit world good. And so they called the God of this world or Gnostics call the God of this world the Demiurge. So if you hear that term Demiurge, that's what they're talking about. And the beliefs actually vary quite a lot between and among heretical sects because there were heretical sects that were not Cathars at all. And there were a lot of teachers within Catharism. Catharism? Catholicism? Catharism. Cathar, by the way, means pure. It comes from the word catharos, cathode, ca cathartic, to purify. All these things have a similar root word in Greece. So Cathar, pure, pure ones. Interesting. Etymology. We do etymology on this channel. But yeah, there were a lot of heretical beliefs going around, and there were a lot of subsets of Gnostics. The Cathars are just one. And did they even call themselves the Cathars, or was that name put on them from elsewhere? See, the Catholic Church has meetings, and then the Pope says, we believe this. Uh, but it's not like that with this heretical sect. There's not like that with heretical sects at all. There's no central authority to say we believe specifically this. Within heresies, there's no central authority. And of course, that makes sense. Because if you're not going to be told how to live by the Catholic Church or the Pope, why would they be told to live by anyone else? There you go. Decentralization. Right there. That is the benefit of a strong central command. We don't have time to go into it now, but the Catholic Church had the benefit of a strong central command, authority, and strength. There was not that similar thing with the Cathars. Cathar holy people were called perfects or parfaits, and they were 10 times holier than Catholic priests and monks. Okay, the Catholic Church at this time, they had just lost their minds. They were fat. They were rich. They were scandalous. These priests, they were having affairs. They were having bastard children, taking bribes. They were no good. Some churches didn't even have mass. They just taxed people. They didn't have a moral leg to stand on. Of course people thought that the Cathars had something to offer. Of course they wanted to go to these good Christians. The Cathar perfects were known as good Christians because they were humble. They were actually good Christians. They didn't eat meat. They didn't engage in lustful activities. They behaved as Christ behaved. Once they took the consolamentum, they promised to reject the temptations of the mortal world, and they did. No meat, no sex, none of those things. And if they did any of those things, they weren't perfects anymore. Now, just think about that. How do you think this compared to the Catholic Church at the time, in the 13th century, this way of acting? How does this compare to the way the monks acted? If you're a peasant or a noble person and you're actually seeking spiritual fulfillment, who are you going to go with? You're not going to go with the Catholic Church, the Cathars all the way. They had better messaging. Their branding was better. They were on brand for Christ. Let's say that. Now, people say that Gnosticism is not real Christianity. It's heterodox. It's not orthodox. But I don't see how Catholic priests at the time could have called themselves Christian either. If anything, Cathars were extra Christian. I'm going to read you this little passage. Ultimately, of course, Christianity is itself implicitly dualist, extolling the spirit, repudiating the flesh, and the whole of unregenerate nature. 
the Cathars preached what might be seen as an extreme form of Christian theology or as an attempt to pursue Christian theology to its logical conclusions. The Cathars didn't need taxes. They weren't building temples or these elaborate churches either. They're not engaging in worldly activities because they don't believe in this world. They don't believe in the material world, so they're not engaging in these material things. They're about spirit only, Cathars, spirit. Plus, Gnostics, remember knowing, Gnostics believed in knowing the divine yourself. And if you know the divine yourself, there's no need for an intermediary. If you take Jesus' word to be absolute truth, then the kingdom of heaven is within you, not in some guy trying to bang your daughter. Like, it doesn't make any sense what the Catholics were selling at this time. So, the Cathars started to form, they started to organize around the middle of the 1100s. This organization was a direct threat to the Catholic Church, to Catholic dominance. All right, yada, yada, yada. I don't want to bore you with the details. The last Cathar was burned at the stake about 200 years later. The Catholic Church, once threatened, immediately annihilated this entire religious and ethnic minority in the span of 200 years. Undefeated. Catholic Church is undefeated. Do you think the Pope called Hitler in the bunker and said, record stands, and just hung up? Is that in downfall? Wouldn't that be sad if that were in downfall? Anyway, there's no point in apologizing for the crusade against the Cathars, since there are no more Cathars left to apologize to. I actually watched this not funny documentary about the Vatican opening its Inquisition archives. I'll link it at the bottom. Basically, the Inquisition took careful notes of everything that happened, and they stored it in the Vatican. Anyway, this Vatican rep seems super defensive. Like, I'm actually surprised you went on camera. I'm really surprised this Vatican rep went on camera and said what he said. I'm actually just going to read it because I don't think I can clip it for you for copyright reasons. The denial of the goodness of creation, the denial of the goodness of marriage. I mean, there were all kinds of elements within Catharism which were truly not only alien, but contrary to Christianity in a fundamental way. The Catholic Church will double down. They're like, maybe we shouldn't have killed you, but we're not sorry you're dead. Like, excuse me? Even 700 years later. Remember that time they released that app with Bruno still burning in the background? Like, oh my God, guys, chill. You won. Okay. The Catholic Church came down hard on heretics, on people committing thought crimes, whether they were Cathars or Waldesians or whatever else, anyone that challenged their claim to power. This is when a heretic challenged the spiritual basis of the Catholic religion, they were also challenging the authority of the Catholic church. It was all about thinking, all about religion and any of these heretics by challenging the spirit realm, by challenging spiritual beliefs, by challenging Catholic doctrine, they actually challenged the church's claim to these resources, the church's claim to power. It's pretty interesting. Okay, so wealth. Wealth and power means gold, and it means kids. It means people, bodies willing to do the work, bodies willing to wield swords or guns, whatever. The Cathars believed that having kids was trapping a soul in this material evil realm, in this material world. Now, there were the regular Cathars who were not perfect, and they still bred. They still had children, uh, but they were not taught to be fruitful and multiply. That wasn't the message of the Cathars. So look, at the end of the day, the Catholic Church is going to outbreed the Cathars anyway, just because of their messaging. Now, that doesn't go along with our modern understanding of a church, but this wasn't our Europe. This wasn't our Europe. This was Christendom. We can't think of Catholicism as a religion like we think of a church right now. We have to think of it as a worldview that supports a system of government, that supports the levers of power. Think about communism in the 1950s United States. It's an idea that's basically incompatible with the prevailing worldview. So from the Catholic's point of mind, it needs to be weeded out and annihilated. I'm just trying to put myself in their shoes. For the Catholic Church to be what it needed to be, they felt they needed to destroy the heretics. This is just my opinion, but I'm getting serious. I'm not sorry. I'm just sorry you're mad vibes from the Catholic Church. That's all. Contrary to Christianity, 
in, in a fundamental way. Okay, so you may have noticed that I yada 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 a whole genocide. It's actually a really interesting story. What happened to them is called the Albigensian Crusade. Pope Innocent III, Innocent, called it against the Cathars in the south of France, in France on continental Europe in 1209. It officially lasted to 1229, so that's a 20-year war. Okay, it's in Afghanistan or two Vietnams, because that's how we count wars. Remember from history class that Christendom, the church, launched a crusade against Jerusalem around 1095. Now, they had multiple crusades against the Muslim world. Christian v. Muslim. It was kind of like a prequel to the Iraq War after 9-11. So interesting. So hot. Also, also not often taught, is that the Pope launched a crusade against Europeans in the south of France. It was called the Albigensian Crusade. And I don't have time to hash it out completely, but I will try to give you the major points, respectfully. When knights went on crusade, they got forgiven for their sins and they got all these special privileges. One of those privileges is not being subject to secular courts. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty sweet, huh? Well, they needed 40 days on crusade to get these privileges. And that was far away in the Middle East. You have to go on horseback and then you're stuck at sea. What could happen? Like lots of things could go wrong. I don't want to go all the way to the Middle East for a crusade. What if there were a crusade in Europe? Bet. So if we can go on crusade in southern France, that's all the better. You can pop over for 40 days, get you some Christ points, and then bounce back. If everything works out, you might get some land, you might get some nobleman's daughter, or anybody's daughter. You can just take what you want. You're a crusader. Now, this is a pretty good deal if you are a later born son of a noble family, because the firstborn gets everything. This is what the crusaders got. All who participated in this campaign were to be placed under the immediate protection of the papacy. They were to be freed from the payments of all interests on their debts. They were to be exempt from the jurisdiction of secular courts. They were to be granted full absolution for their sins and vices, provided they serve a minimum of 40 days. In this way, in this way, sneaky, sneaky, the Pope got secular armies to do its dirty work. Now the church can and does say that their hands are clean. It was the king or the duke of whatever that really did the killing. But who was whispering in king's ear? Modern people. Okay, modern people. We're all about the bag, so it's really hard for us to understand that leaders of the past might be acting on an ideology. But everybody was Catholic at that time. They cared about this religious stuff, stuff that we'd be consider superstitious and silly. Like they used to dig up bodies and then burn them for punishment if they were convicted of heresy after their deaths. And that way the soul couldn't be reunited with the body in the last judgment. Like who is this punishment for except the person having to do it? This is nuts to us. To us, to us, we are not them. This was a long time ago. These were different people. All of these people were gross and illiterate. Morally, they were gross. They were morbid. They were depraved. Physically, they were unwashed. The only people who could read were the priest class and like the nerdiest duke, the one they all picked on. That's the guy who could read. And the zealots at the church, they weren't much kinder than the secular knights. You ever heard that saying, kill them all and let God sort them out? Like it's something our Marines are supposed to say, but you know who said it first? The head of the Cistercian monks, it's supposed to be said by this guy called Arnold Amory before the massacre at Beziers, 1209 at the start of the crusade. They killed everyone. They killed everyone. They killed Catholic. They killed Cathar just to be on the safe side. And there was not that many people in Europe to be massacring a whole town at this time. They estimated to have killed 15,000 men, women, and children, including Catholics in church. They killed everyone. They killed everyone. Beziers, 1209. Massacre. And when word got out about this, everyone around was just like, oh my God, these people are animals. These people are monsters. Imagine now a town of 15,000 wiped off the map. Children killed. Now take that back to a time where the population was a fraction of what it is today. You're talking about a town, 100, 150,000 just wiped away. Like they didn't need that manpower. This is crazy. We can't even imagine what the massacre at Beziers would have been like to someone hearing that news in a nearby town or city. Catholic church, y'all. Catholic church. This was just, this was absolute barbarism in the name of God. Also, the man the Pope put in charge, Simon de Montfort, gouged out the eyes and cut the lips off of a hundred defeated men. He left one with one single eye so he could lead these men to the next town so that the people of the area could see what happens when you cross the church. 
This is the only time that I will seriously make a comparison to the Nazis, to the extent that the Nazis were this evil or the Nazis were as evil as them. When someone calls something medieval, this is what they're talking about. This is absolute savagery. There's no excuse for this by modern standards. And really, it's easy to see why the Cathars thought that the Catholic Church was Rome because it literally was Rome. It actually was Rome. It was set in Rome. It was the whore of Babylon, and it was an instrument of an evil god. These people, they don't know about the Americas. They don't know about the Adams yet. They only know their little hobbit shire in Christendom. And who's the villain? The Catholic Church. No wonder why the Cathars think these things. Ooh, and I'm going to make another video on this. I don't have time for it right now. But the original meaning of the word heretic in Greek means to choose. Not to choose wrong, just to choose. It went through Latin, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to make a video on it. It's not that video right now. I also don't have time to fully go into the Albigensian Crusade. It starts at Beziers. It goes to Montsegur. It's... It's a beautiful epic tale. It's the birthplace of the Inquisition, an organized campaign that ripped apart the social fabric of Europe for 600 years, whose very name still haunts us in our nightmares. I don't have time to give the Albigensian crusade justice, but if I had to summarize what happened in one sentence, I will say this. The Catholic Church had to get its subscribers up. Heretics were messing around with the subscriber count, and we're not talking YouTube subs either. We're talking Patreon subs, cash money. Catholic Church, Knights on Crusade. They couldn't let their Patreon subs leave and go where? To the Cathars, a bunch of broke dummies who don't even want the bag. Ew, no, gross, kill them all, Catholic Church. Pope, not so innocent, am I right? Am I right? JK, this is a stain on the fabric of humanity. Pour nothing on the sidewalk for our fallen Cathars because they did not believe in the mortal coil. Real ones, real ones to the end. I don't have time for it all today, but if you're interested in learning more about the Cathars and their heroic struggle against the Catholic Church, read The Perfect Heresy by Stephen O'Shea, The Revolutionary Life and Death of the Medieval Cathars. Great book. It's actually really entertaining and... Uh, it reads fast. A lot of books on this, they don't read so fast, but this one, it reads fast. Definitely recommend. Oh, and also I will link some really good documentaries in the bottom that you can find on YouTube. So there's that. I mentioned before that the Cathar heresy actually motivated the Catholic Church to begin the Inquisition. I don't have time for that today, but I'm going to bring you a full video on the Inquisition because the Inquisition set the stage for our modern world. Picture the worst thing you can think about, about the modern world. What's the worst thing about being alive today? Okay, the Inquisition made that possible. There's another video. It's too much for one video, and this particular video is about the Cathars, not the people who destroyed them. So, so now that we know about the Cathars, who they were, what they did, and how they went out, how do they stack up against other cults? Okay, rate my cult, the Cathars. <laughs> Number one, quality of the followers, full credit. The Cathars held their services anywhere, outside. They didn't need these elaborate churches. People could understand and they could speak and they could discuss. They could have discussions after sermons. The Catholic Church's services, when there were services, they were in Latin and nobody spoke Latin except the clergy. Who are these services for? Now, this story has everything. The Cathar story has everything, has brave knights, has holy men. It has a heroic last stand against the evil empire. It's Star Wars. This story has so much, and I get that's why people want to be a part of it now, why people look to the lore, why a whole group of people were convinced that they are reincarnated Cathars. A whole group of people in Bath were convinced that they were reincarnated Cathars. Interesting story, link to the bottom. Plus, look around at what's going on in the day. Would you not be a Cathar? So, full credit, quality of the followers. Moving on. Beliefs in doctrines, full credit, because they interpreted the Bible for themselves and were not part of the educated elite that was supposed to control the information and thought. That was the Catholic Church, that was the priest who spoke Latin. <laughs> So they, they were not speaking Latin. They were speaking the vernacular and they were speaking directly to people. They were not part of this privileged priest class. It wasn't about this world. 
any of these free thinkers who say that people should think for themselves and agree with you because it's in their best interest, well, that challenges the orthodoxy. That challenges the people in power and they start to worry. Government, that should be honest because you know what? Sunlight is the best disinfectant and people will see them for what they really are. But you know what the really best disinfectant is? Fire. Fire. The Catholic Church won because it rained actual fire, not sunlight. Like people saw that they were evil. It didn't matter. Okay, if you put bullets in one hand and you put sunlight in the other, which one is heavier? Also, under beliefs, the Cathars believed in reincarnation. There's a lot of fun to be had there. We love reincarnation. They believed in a trickster or an evil god called the Demiurge, and they believed that perfects should renounce this material world. The Cathars didn't build any churches themselves, and their documents have been destroyed. We're getting their beliefs secondhand from the people who killed them and took the notes. And still, the Cathars seem pretty cool. Imagine the Catholic Church having all the money in the world for PR and having written the history and still coming off like the bad guy. Like, how bad must they have actually been? You have all the benefits to make you look good and you still don't look good. So there we go. We don't have Cathar documents. We have what people say about them. As for charismatic leader, charismatic leader, half because the Cathars had many leaders. They had these perfects who didn't engage in carnal sins. They had like this priest class. They actually believed in something. They weren't nihilists and they believed in more than themselves and their own personal benefit. The perfects actually gave consolamentum to the dying People who were on their deathbeds, they would go and give them basically their last rites, but for Catharism. And they did this. The perfects did this, even though doing this put their lives at risk. They could go to trial. They could be executed. They could be burned at the stake. The perfects also gave guidance to their followers, even in the toughest of times. Now, the Cathars did have powerful noble families that defended them, but these families were defeated and their lands were taken by the French from the north. They were colonized. The Crusaders got rewarded with land for helping the church. It's kind of sad. Quick poll in the comments. This is actually, I'm really curious about this. How many people do you think involved in this crusade were actually atheists, like de facto atheists? Like in my opinion, in my opinion, the Cathars believed because they had to go to the stake on it. But I don't know about these Catholic priests. I don't know about these knights. I think it may have been 50-50. The whole endeavor is just too financially convenient for everybody involved for them all to be believers. You know what I mean? I think they must have noticed, yo, this is making us a lot of money. And all we have to do is kill these people. So I really don't know. Did they believe or didn't they believe? What do you think? It's hard for us to tell 700 years later. Now, the last perfect burned was a man called William Bellabast, and he was not a perfect. He was a perfect, but he was far from perfect. He wasn't an OG good Christian, but maybe he was adapting for his time. He is just this character who has all of these adventures. He died in 1312, so that kind of gives you a time frame of from the time the Crusades were called until the last perfect was burned. And by this late date, it kind of makes sense that he might have to sin in order to blend in, in order to not stick out as a heretic. So, so he wasn't perfect. That's all we can say. And he was a character in his own right. Moving on to brainwashing techniques. Now, I can only give them half credit here because the reality of the time was brainwashing enough. Think about it. What would a medieval peasant see of this world and of its power? Cruel knights, Rome, Rome, which was the villain in the Bible, was now taking over and calling itself the voice of Christ. Why would anybody not be a Cathar? That's just what I see. There's a dude, a priest, sent from Rome, reading in Latin that Rome is evil. Reality is the brainwashing techniques. Like, for the facts on the ground in 1200 AD, reality is enough to say, uh, don't trust the Catholic Church. I can't give them credit for reality, but they do deserve some credit because the Cathar perfects walked into the fires. They walked into the fires to burn rather than renounce their beliefs. Think about the people at Montsegur who walked into the fire and became perfects by doing that rather than renounce the Cathar faith. It's amazing. They didn't believe in suicide, but they gladly died for their religion because they believed in doing so they'd be reunited with their God. Now, it's hard to get into the heads of a people who didn't know about the atom, who didn't know about gravity. So what am I going to say about brainwashing? 
when it's so hard to get into their minds to know how you would wash such a thing. How do we wash this black iron prison? Wow, it's made of stone and mud. It's crazy in here. I, brainwashing, what is that? That's all relative to the time. I don't even think they needed much brainwashing. This is a whole video in and of itself. You could get a doctorate degree talking about it. Practices and rituals. The consolamentum, dope, and they could give it to the dying so that the dying could leapfrog this reincarnation process and get there right next to God, right into permanent heaven. Pretty cool. They were vegans. Now, this is funny because Cathar Perfects were vegans, except they weren't real vegans because they ate fish. Now, they didn't know what fish were. They thought the sea miraculously just spawned fish. So they basically thought that tuna and seaweed were the same thing. It's fine. They didn't know about science. That's what I mean. Like, how can we even get in their brains? They think that the sea just makes fish. Whatever. That's cool. They also abstained from sex, liquor, violence, lying, all those things. In fact, this is funny, the Catholics could keep an eye out for Cathar perfects by seeing who was acting right in public. Like, mm, imagine being so sinful, so sinful that you see a person not being sinful and you think, wow, that person must be a heretic. This is the Catholic Church around 1300. Full points on practices and rituals. The Cathars. The Cathars are a five goat head cult. RIP Cathars, real ones. If you're not getting burned at the stake, do you even believe in what you're saying? Come on. Now, moving on to the Christometer. I would bet my house, a house that I do not own but rent, I would bet the house that they killed at least one Jesus. I'm like Christometer 50%. Think about it. Jesus died on the cross, which Cathars thought was a goofy thing to worship. Like, if your child dies by gun violence, you don't make an altar to a gun. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, in Judea, Rome did the crucifying. In Toulouse, Rome did the lighting of these fires. It was the same Rome. That means nothing to you, but that would blow a medieval peasant's mind. Imagine they had medieval Instagram. That meme would go viral. The, people would just be in there. I was like, what? The same Rome? Medieval Instagram. Okay. We're going to go off on this. Food porn and medieval Instagram would just be like meat pies and turkey legs. Medieval Instagram models wash out at 17. Medieval memes are non-existent because nobody could read. <laughs> Actually, screw medieval Instagram. I want medieval TikTok. But we're not, we're not doing this right now. We're not doing this right now. This is serious. Okay. All that to say, history doesn't repeat but it rhymes. We've been over this. Shame on Rome again. <laughs> Rome killing saviors for 2,000 years, undefeated. However, nothing is black and white. There are stories where Rome is the hero. But in this story, the story of the Cathars, they are the villain. And all I'm saying is that the Catholic Church had many stories to tell, but the Cathars had only this one. And... I don't want to get too technical, but the Catholic Church maybe kind of sort of apologized for this in a roundabout way. Pope John Paul said something obscure in this letter. It's okay. People say he may have kind of apologized. I'm not Catholic, so if Catholics respect that this letter is an apology, that's their right. Certainly no Catholic today has to answer for crimes from 700 years ago, nor do the descendants of these colonizing knights have to answer for what their ancestors did. That's just water under the bridge at this point. R.I.P. Cathars. Subscribe.